What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, I don't even need to ask you how are you. I already know. Congratulations on the Kansas City Thieves, I mean Chiefs, winning the Super Bowl. Side note, I got to congratulate you on taking the lead. Your squad now has four titles. Everybody knows yeah, there's I'm a, the Raider fan. We only have three titles. Bronco fans out there's there. There's only three titles. Charger fans. There's crickets. Zero. <laughs> there's only four teams that have more titles than we do. And two that we're tied with. The Packers and the Giants were tied with. Cowboys and the Niners have five. The Steelers and the Patriots have six. I, I think we might That's be in the company. upper tier before too long. That's good company. Now you have to avoid the, um, what was it, the 10 year gap that Brady had between titles? Yeah. Um, and he had his opportunities because I'm pretty sure those were the years that he lost to the Giants. Yeah, uh, he lost was during twice his to the Giants gap. and he lost the AFC Championship game twice to the uh, Peyton Manning and the Colts and Peyton Manning and the Broncos. Yeah, well, those I don't count as as chances because he wasn't in the game. So true. true. Um, but yeah, so I like I was saying on our text story, you know, I I would I would be okay with with Veach and and Hunt and 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 Reed, you know, mortgage in a few years of our future, you know, just breaking open the checkbook, doing everything uh, that you possibly can legally within the limits, obviously uh, being very creative with the, with the salary cap yes. and buy next year's Super Bowl, kind of like the 49ers did and the Cowboys did in 95 or 94 and 95, you know, they both brought uh, the Deion uh, Sanders Deion's, sweepstakes. Yeah, that type of thing where you basically, you know, and no different. Let's go back to the Rams a few years ago. They bought that Super Bowl. Yeah. So I, I am okay with, I would like to see us do that just to do something that nobody has ever done. Three I feet. would be okay with sacrificing, you know, the next three to four years after that being in salary cap jail and having four rings under your belt. Now, here's the three, thing, and I'm going to say this. Three back to back to back, you know. I'm not a Chiefs fan, but I'm going to say this. You go back to back to back. You Like you said, no one's ever done it before. In my mind, that makes you the greatest team ever. Forget about the 72 Dolphins. Yeah, I know that they went undefeated. That was one season. They weren't a dynasty. And oh, by the way, yeah, if you so guys have been keeping up with this show, we said... That if they won the Super Bowl, you can consider them a dynasty. I do. Oh yeah, they're definitely a dynasty. They they um, win three. They win three in a row. That that's an accomplishment that has never been done. Probably never will be done again. Not in our lifetime, the, anyway. I think I think the closest team to do it was the nineteen ninety San Francisco Forty Nine ers. I think the Cowboys had a shot at it. Nope. They didn't have a shot to get to get well. Because at one point they got two in a row. They were both over the Bills. But I think that they lost yeah, they, the they may uh, have division they round may have, the following well, year. Well, then that's not a shot. <laughs> a shot would be at least one game away. You know what I mean? Like 1990 lost, the Niners lost the, the NFC Championship game to the Giants. Okay. That was that was the year that Montana got hurt, and that's why he got traded here. And then the Giants went in and beat the Bills. That first Super Bowl loss was in 1990. That's right, because so, the Bills actually did go four years in a row. Just yeah, lost they all went, four of them. They lost four straight. So, so going uh, is very doable, but winning three in a row, man, that would just be... 
I mean, you can't already tell me shit anyway as a Chiefs fan now. So that would get Just back don't to get back. drunk during the parade and start climbing trees. Uh, I already told you that's going to happen. All right. Hey. Um, Although, no, I'm not really. I'm really not going to be there. But, uh, you know, you've seen one parade. You've basically seen them all. Tomorrow's going to be like 65 degrees. It's there's, People are going to be coming out of the woodworks. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. I forgot. People. I forgot what day the parade was going to be on myself. I just happened to be tomorrow. doing some online banking, and I got a message: such and such bank will be closed tomorrow in observance of the parade. I'm like, what? So you know, yeah they they closed the schools down and everything. Oh yeah, they shut it all down. All right, let me get to a couple questions here. Uh, right. I, I, I want to talk about these things, and let's start with. The win by Kansas City or the loss by San Francisco, whatever you want to call it. I want to talk about this overtime rule. What do you call it? What do I call what? Do you call it the win by Kansas City or the loss by the 49ers? I call it a win. And here's why. Before I even go into the overtime rule. You play defense no matter what, right? Till the whistle's blown. So you you don't slack off thinking that their clock's running out or anything like that. Right. Okay. So did they snap the ball? Did Mahomes throw the ball? You talking about an overtime? Yeah. Yeah. And the ball was caught by a yep. player that wasn't defended. Yep. He was schemed out of the play. Ball game. Charvarius Ward, ex Kansas City Chief. Ball game. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Ball game. Um, now you and I had talked about it before. The old mm-hmm. overtime rule was called sudden death. First person mm-hmm. to score wins. Got it. Thanks to Buffalo. Wah, we both need the ball. I would have been cool with that. However, the NFL took it a step further. And this is the part that I wasn't aware of until Sunday. There's no time limit. Once if you're if you're both tied and overtime is over, it's not double overtime. It's another quarter of overtime. And I, I wasn't hip on that or how that worked. Um, I didn't realize that you could run the clock down and just switch into the field and continue on with overtime. Now, that may be what they were thinking. They're just going to run the clock down. We'll go over to the other end of the field. Didn't happen that way. But uh, who's the 49ers? You think that's what they City. were thinking? Huh? You're thinking that's what the 49ers were thinking? I, I, I don't know. It just looks to me. That's what I thought at first because it didn't look like they tried on the play. Man, they got schemed out of it. It was that same play that we beat the Eagles with last year. Same exact play. Was it? Same play. Yeah, that corn dog right. Same That's thing. worse than they should have been prepared for. If it. you, well, I mean, but you, when you run it, and 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 uh, who was that Hardman that caught the ball? Yes, he goes he goes in motion, okay, mm-hmm. and then he goes in motion, and then number seven, which was uh, Traverius Ward, he moved down, but then once the ball is hiked. Hardman completely does a, a 180 and goes back towards the end zone. He's already out of the way because of the tight end. Travis Kelsey's there. Yeah. So the the two DBs didn't switch like they were supposed to. And that's because they were playing. I, I want to say they're playing man instead of zone. If they're playing zone, it wouldn't have been a problem. Neither one of them would have moved, but they were playing man. And it was, it was, a, it was a perfect call. And to the Chiefs' credit, if it didn't work, then they would go down the other side of the field and have another shot at it. I personally uh, did not realize that you would just go into another quarter. I thought if they didn't score by the end of, you know, when the clock strikes zero, then it's it's a wrap. You know, you have to score or tie. But I guess, uh, I mean, it is, you said it's not timed. Theoretically, it is timed. Well, yeah. Uh, and I didn't catch it because the ref said, hey, we're playing a whole nother game. Didn't even think about that. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, but you know, credit to the Chiefs, man. They they knew the they knew the rules. I mean, they still had two or three timeouts, so 
they weren't calling them, so they weren't they weren't stressing. No, they, they and I and, and I that's think the mark that the, of a good team. You got your shit yeah. together. You know what you're doing. You're not worried about the other team. Yeah, I think that 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 uh, the Chiefs used um, that kind of uncertainty against the 49ers. Because the 49ers probably thought, well, if they don't score here, the game's over. You know, we're not going to call a timeout, you know, because the clock's going to run out. We're going to win. We're up by three. So I think they just kind of used that against them. But, hey, if you loved defense, that first half was for you. Yeah. If you loved suspense and drama, that third quarter was you. And if you needed oxygen and not to go to the emergency room, the fourth quarter and the overtime was for you. It had a little bit of everybody. I thought it was a, I've heard a lot of people say it was a very boring Super Bowl. I thought it was very entertaining. It had all aspects. And Mahomes said it perfectly. It was a microcosm of the Chiefs season, the way that game went. So, yeah, I mean, if I would agree with being you, a Chiefs fan, watching every single game, you know, it, I, I knew what to expect. Now, I will tell you this. Aside from the debacle at the end of overtime, in that third and fourth quarter, I think San Francisco, where they went wrong, I kept seeing them blitz. And I've who, said this before who? on the show. There are four quarterbacks that you never, ever blitz. And Mahomes is one of them. He will kill you with the blitz. Now, I don't mind you rushing four. If you can rush four, rush four, but don't blitz. That's the worst thing. You, he's going to find the open man. And he did. Yeah, in, the, in the first half, they were able to get pressure with four. Exactly. In the, in the third quarter, we adjusted in order to do that. Uh, Chase Young was killing our left tackle. Was killing him. And then we adjusted. And he wasn't making the pressure. And then they just stopped blocking Bosa and ran around him. Those play or uh, uh, option keepers that 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 Mahomes kept, those were. If you go back and watch them, they just let Bosa run himself right out of the play. Exactly. Is is I saw that several times, and you know, I was never really high yeah, it was him defensively anyway. But oh, Bosa's a beast. Me. Bosa's a beast. If Bosa was on your team, y'all would be. Pretty tight with Crosby on one side and Bosa on the other. Y'all would be pretty legit. Oh, I'm not going to lie. I would take that, but. Yeah, Bosa's a beast. He, he, he does over pursue. Um, yeah, when he doesn't, he doesn't adjust well, but I think that's coaching. Because if the yeah. coach is calling a particular rush type play. You know, not necessarily, hey, don't let, you know, because in the first half, they're telling him don't let. Don't let Mahomes out of the out of his, you know, don't let him get out beside outside the tackles. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Bosa was doing his job. But then, like you said, they went to cover zero and and all out blitzes and things like that. And now let me ask them, you this. Them crossing routes were great. Also concerning overtime. The consensus mm -hmm. was, and I've heard this a couple places, a couple shows, San Francisco should not have taken the ball first. They I don't I don't I don't agree with that. Because to me, it doesn't matter. A lot of people were saying they should have let Kansas City do what they do and then get the ball back. What if Kansas City scores a touchdown anyway? That puts more pressure on you. You have to score a touchdown. Phil goal won't do it. I don't think the I, I don't think it puts any more pressure. I, I can see both sides. I can see I understand why the 49ers did what they did because they figured, hey, our defense has been playing lights out anyway, just like the Chiefs' defense is. Mm -hmm. If we can hold them to a field goal, then it officially becomes sudden death. first one to score wins. So mm -hmm. we get the ball twice versus the Chiefs once. The problem with going first is that team, that second team, for instance, like the 49ers only got three the second team now gets to play with all four downs because you know they're not punting because they have to keep going to win the game. Mm -hmm. So you're giving Mahomes an extra down to play with. That's where the strategy, you know, would come into come into play. 
Um, I, I'm okay with either way. Um, even if they would have gave it, we went first and we went down and scored. Who's to say that that wouldn't have been, they would have now had four downs. You know, they've been playing with all four downs. It might have went down and scored. You know, and then we're going, you know, and then we get the ball back, going down and kick a field goal, and then they'd be like, oh, they sh should have cut the ball first. You know, you six one, half dozen the other. I, I agree with what they did simply because, and I see your point, both both have their pros and cons. But yeah. The offense wasn't really doing much. The defense was playing lights out. So, yeah, you 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 take the ball first. Get what you can, and then we'll put our defense out there. And I would also say, too, at that time of the game, the 49ers defense was just on the field. And yeah. the Chiefs marched down to tie the game. The 49ers defense was gassed. So I could also see the head coach's idea of let me give my guys a little bit of rest. You know, and then what? Each team had the ball for half a quarter, you know, so – 49ers kept the ball for a pretty decent amount of time. Um, they just forgot to block Chris Jones on that last play <laughs> and had to settle for a field goal, you know. Arguably the best defensive player, you just let him through. Okay, sure. Right. You just you and just say arguably, him. because there there is room to for Sneed in that conversation. Well, we'll say this arguably the best defensive lineman. How's that? Hey, fair enough. All right. Um How'd you like the uh, halftime show? Uh, if I had a grade, I'd probably give it a B minus B. I mean, it was all right. I'm going to say a C plus. And, and here's why. He, he put out a lot of, you know, he, he, he sang a lot of hits, but it was like, it felt like it was just 10 seconds. Go to the next song. Yeah. 10 seconds. Go to the next. Let me do two verses and, and I'm out, you know, go to the next song. And sometimes he only did like two notes. <laughs> right. And, and and to me, I, I kind of felt you feel cheated like that. It's like, what are you out here for if you're just going to do a piece here and a piece there? It, it, it's not as cohesive. I'd rather you do less songs, but go longer. A la like Prince did. Uh, yeah. MJ back in the day. You know, you know I'm try not going to squeeze them all in. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed the Alicia Keys portion of it. I was envying her. I was envying her outfit. I wish I was her outfit. Whew. She was wearing and, that uh, outfit. Or how well, did you that, say it? That, out, that outfit was wearing her. That outfit her. was wearing her. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, also, uh, you know, I didn't, I liked her uh, when she yeah. came out with the guitar. That was pretty dope. I, I mean, I enjoyed the, the, Ludacris and 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 Lil John and all that yeah. that came out that was that was pretty good. I do kind of wish though I'm with you that they would instead of picking twenty songs and singing ten to fifteen seconds of each song that they pick five or six bangers and just sing them. You know what I mean? You know, give me twelve minutes of four or five of your biggest hits. You know, they they could have did the turn down for what or whatever that song was that he's yeah. with Lil John and Ludacris. You know, uh, you know they could have did all that for the last five minutes of it and would have been hot. You know, yeah, um, yeah. So I mean, like I said, I, it was all right. I enjoyed it because you know, being in that generation, growing up listening to Usher, I enjoyed listening to the songs, and you know. Obviously, my daughters were in hog heaven, but uh, I was a little disappointed, though, when he took off his shirt and I realized that he shaved his armpits. That's a little feminine for me. <laughs> I, I didn't even notice that. Because, you know, I kind of I, I kind of have to I kind of have to look at him differently. Well, you couldn't help it with his arm. I'm like, damn, where's all his hair at? That, that's true. Just think, you know, I'm just things I look at. All right. Uh, I'm I'm going to right before the game, before mm -hmm. we close it out, because I want I want to go to a more serious note. Where do you stand on the lift every voice and sing? That's that song that's sung before the national anthem. Mm -hmm. Where do you um, stand on that? Right in the middle. I mean, I, I, I it doesn't bother me at all. Well, the reason why I bring that up, prominent supporters of Donald Trump were furious 
with the inclusion of the Black Nan- National Anthem at the Super Bowl. The pregame performance at the Super Bowl no. included a rendition of Lift Every Voice and Sing performed by recording art- artist Andra Day and the hymn adopted by the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People, the NAACP, is often referred to as the Black National Anthem. And before you comment on it, I just want to... Uh, I want to read this comment. Uh, it's from uh, Representative Matt Getz, and I don't know what city or state he represents, but uh, his on X, formerly known as Twitter, he wrote, they're desecrating America's national anthem by playing something called the Black National Anthem. Uh, the account called End Wokeness added, there's no such thing as a Black National Anthem. If you have a problem with American National Anthem, feel free to leave. And I think that people like that are missing the point. I don't believe it's to replace the National Anthem. It is a song of unity. I think adopting the nickname the Black National Anthem doesn't help it, but for people to believe that it's in place of the national anthem they're wrong your thoughts on that sir i mean it's obvious it's not replacing the national anthem because they sing it right after right but here's my problem with that whole scenario the Mm -hmm. term black national anthem that irks the hell out of me because what is the white national anthem There isn't one. I feel you. There's just a freaking national anthem. Lift Every Voice and Sing is not a national anthem. And it is a gospel spiritual hymn. Yes. Period. (laughs) So those people that, that want to somehow involve it as a racial fight or blah 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 you know we're doing this one because we don't believe in it you know miss me with that bs because that's not what it's for it's like you said it's it's to create unity and if you are one of those people that have a problem with that song you Mm -hmm. are part of the overall problem in this country period and if you don't like what i'm saying email me i will give you my address you can come talk to me about it personally or you can just email email us at the uh, slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. Matter of fact, okay. I'm curious. That, that, that just really irks me. That, that whole irks me. That whole thing irks me. It just really does. It just it just sticks in my crawl. I, I don't blame you. I don't bl- we're, we're we're just so divided as a country among things that we shouldn't be divided on. It's it's there almost like there are so many other things that happen in that game, not football related that we should be discussing. That's affecting the overall humanity, except for the songs that were sung at the beginning of the game. Agree. You know, so it's just, yeah. Okay. Stepping off my soapbox now. (laughs) Well, before we close it out, is there anything that stood out to you? During the game, it could be pre-game, post-game, the game itself. Anything that you take away? Um, what you mean, like overall, just my overall feeling, like, like, like anything the actual just, game itself, or yeah, let's just talk the actual game itself. Is there any particular thing that you will take with you forever? That last drive, man. That that last drive was to me would would jump in the same realm as the game ending drives that montana did against the Bengals in the super bowl to win the game now was that the drive where mahomes did the 20 yard run up the middle yes at the towards the very end Mm -hmm. because yeah where to me that's when i knew kansas city had won the game because for the entire game they kept him in check until that point well no 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 that's inaccurate they kept him in check in the first half, but in the third quarter, that's where they did the first uh, option play that he got 28 yards on and completely that's where, you know, Bosa ran right around him and he just kept on rolling. And then 
Uh, they did a couple other ones. And then on that drive before the field goal, they did the fourth and one. And he kept it, you know, they called a timeout and then he kept it and did the same thing. Um, but, you know, so that last play, you know, that was in the final drive. He, there's a great, who's, uh, there's somebody that, that actually was online talking about it. They actually ran that same type of play mm -hmm. uh, in the first half. And, and that's when the 49ers were rushing. So, so. Mahomes knew that it was the same defense, but he went up in the pocket too late. And that's when Chase Young sacked him. He knew of, he knew right away to get right up in that pocket and he knew he would have a free shot. And they broke both plays down video. And it was, you know, it's just because they said Mahomes is like a computer. He's gathering information in the first and second quarter. And in the third and fourth quarter, he's using what you did in the first half. He's using how you reacted against you. And he but, did. And, you know, and, you know, and also, too, with all due respect, you know, they were pretty gassed at that point, too, the the, the defense. I was kind of, I was very impressed with uh, that, that last throw to Kelsey before the game-winning touchdown because I didn't even see that ball going to him. And Kelsey, you know, went in the middle, bounced, and basically drug people to the first down marker. I want to back up for just a second, because I hear this a lot, too. The defense was gassed. The defense was gassed. The offense wasn't fresh either now. True, but offense dictates the pace. I'll give you that. The defense has no control over that, unless they want to call timeouts. Because offense can, you know, if you realize they were doing a lot of no huddle stuff too in that last drive. So they wasn't given the 49ers opportunity to switch out people because we weren't switching out people. And if I'm the 49ers, that's where I would have used some timeouts. Yeah. But they thought, again, because the 49ers didn't know the overtime rules, Yeah, that if the clock went down to all zeros, we win because we're up by three. So I don't want to give the Chiefs more opportunity. So, yeah, that last drive, that was, you know, as a – and, that, and, and that's the that other thing. You history. mentioned you don't want to give the Chiefs any opportunity. We've seen what the man can do with 13 seconds. So Do you realize, do you realize that that last, that last play before the hardest started – Was it the 13-second mark? 13-second mark. Mm -hmm. Second 13-second mark game. Well, San Francisco fans – Better you than me. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Go Chiefs. Yeah, go to hell, Chiefs. Oh, <laughs> you didn't you didn't mention hell. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Time out. Typical, typical Raider fan. Gotta hate on winning team because his guys will never make the playoffs. Now, hey, don't get it twisted. We not the Chargers now. We got some hardware, too. Close enough. No, no. We're closer to y'all than we are them. Hold they got to win can, three to catch us. You cannot talk about your hardware when you dog the Cowboys for not winning anything since the 90s. Y'all ain't won shit since the 80s. But I can talk about but, the Cowboys. But nothing. I got a vendetta you, the, against the Cowboys. I'm just saying, if the rule goes for the Cowboys, it goes for y'all too. All right, I'll leave the Cowgirls alone. Now, I'm not saying that 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 you guys ain't never going to win because your coach, I like your coach. Uh, but, you know, as of right now, it's the Chiefs time. It is. You know, I, I, I give props where props are due. They are the champs, the two-time champs. Well, technically, it's three-time well, now it's four Technically, times. Technically, it's four times. Yeah, but, four you know, times. Two times back, back to back. Back to back, champs. Um, before we close it out, we'll go NFC first. Mm -hmm. Do you see San Francisco going back next year, or do you think another team is going to emerge? I mean, if you held my feet to the fire today... I would say the 49ers have a shot to come back. But history has taught us that the loser of the Super Bowl normally has a down year the next year. 
a la look at the Eagles this year. But if you look they at recent they history, comple they completely shit the bed. But if you look at recent history, look at the year before that, the Bengals yeah. had a down year after they lost the Super Bowl. But if you look at the year before that, it was us. Y'all lost we didn't Tampa make, Bay, but you came right. back. But we didn't make it to the game. That was the year that the Bengals and the Chiefs, or the Bengals and the Rams were in the Super Bowl. That's right. The year before that, the 49ers lost. They didn't have a good year the next year. So history does teach us that they take a step back. Now, they do have the players. I don't know if they have the coaching staff. I, I really, I'm not impressed with their coaching staff. They miss DeMarco Ryans. DeMarco Ryans was on that, or D'Amico Ryans was on, was still their coordinator. We'd have lost that Super Bowl. Firmly believe it. Head coaching is a factor too. And I don't believe on the big stage, Shanahan has what it takes. I mean, History would tell you, no, he doesn't. I mean, but also to his credit, his three Super Bowls that he's lost, and I say three Super Bowls that he's lost, he lost to the two greatest quarterbacks that ever played the game. Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes. Now, I'm not going to say Shanahan is trash because let's not forget Andy was there too and lost. Andy Green, was there he once. He lost to Tom Brady. Andy was there once and then got back his second time in one. Yeah. But I mean, it can happen. Eventually he can. It can. I mean, Purdy, Purdy is going to have to play better. I mean, he played phenomenal. Don't get me wrong. P Purdy played his ass off. I but, mean, considering this is his first full year as the starter, not bad. I mean, yeah. I mean, he, yeah, I agree. I mean, he, he, he kept them in that game and played, but there were there were plays that he should have made and didn't. Where Mahomes made the plays that he should have made to win the game. That's the difference. Yeah. Because both defenses were playing lights out. Yeah. I, mean, I will say too, man, what Chris a sad Jones thing. in your face. You 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 better get rid of that ball. So yeah. What a sad thing to see Greenlaw pop his Achilles and then just going Coming on off the sideline. Just Damn. going onto the field. That is that was just that's just that. I pray that he that he heals timely, you know, and yeah. able to play sometime next year. Yeah, let's hope so. And that's the other thing I want to touch on on San Francisco. They have a lot of injuries throughout the year and even down the stretch. I think Debo has been dealing with a shoulder injury. So I think Kittle had a shoulder energy energy. I know he went to the locker injury. room for a little while mm -hmm. and came back right but, there in the overtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he, he was very quiet. So whoever, whoever was, who was on him? Karloftis? I don't know that. I, that was, that was play calling. They just didn't call his number. That's something then that Purdy should learn then. Your tight what end you, should I'm, be your safety net. Yeah, I agree. Well, also not only that, but the offense should be playing, calling those plays to, you know, obviously CMC is your first choice. Yes. Debo is your second choice. Yes. Ayuk is your third choice. Yes. Kittle's number four. So you should design plays. And give him some touches. I think he I only would, touched the ball three I times. I would switch Ayuk and Kittle. For I wouldn't. Four. Why? Ayuk is Ayuk is is a more active playmaker than Kittle. Kittle is a blocking tight end. And if you leave him open, he's a Gronk catching tight end. He catches the ball and fights for contact. Kelsey does not. Now people say Kelsey doesn't like to block. Kelsey will block your ass off. Yeah. But he has that wiggle space in his hips that, you know, is a little different than than Kittle. Kelsey's an oversized wide receiver. Oh, you could say the same thing for Kittle. Yeah, but, but you Kelsey, say, you could, Kelsey has it. You could that you look you could for say any, about any tight end is an oversized wide receiver. 
Kelsey's just got uh, more moves. He's got more moves. Yeah, he's just he's he's that guy. He, he's that guy. All right, gang. Who's that guy to you? I still have a lot to talk about. I wish we didn't have to cut it off. Oh, there will be more time. We've got all off season. So much more. We will be back, and y'all know it. Okay, kids. Big Show's going to take it on home. We will be back next week. Enjoy the parade, Kansas City Kingdom. We'll see you next week. Love each other. Tomorrow's not promise. And if I see any of y'all on social media falling out of trees drunk, I'm posting that shit. <laughs>